In this screencast, I want to show you how to load data into Power Pivot. Power Pivot is the new Excel add-in that enables users to do their own business intelligence. It's also an add-in for SharePoint 2010, but actually it's part of SQL Server 2008 R2. So let's get started. I'm running here on a virtual machine that's got two gigabytes of RAM and I've assigned it four logical processors. I'm going to open Excel 2010 now. And you can see here that I've actually installed a Power Pivot add-in already. And if I click on it, I can now bring up the main Power Pivot window. This looks a bit like an, any other Office application. And the first thing we need to do in order to have fun with Power Pivot is to get some data. We have a variety of choices here. I can get data from databases, SQL Server, Access, and in fact from pretty well any ODBC or OLADB data source, as well as from analysis services and other Power Pivot apps. I can get data from flat files and Excel spreadsheets. And the new one you might not have seen before is from data feeds. And the interesting one here is from reporting services. And that must be from reporting services also in SQL Server 2008 R2. Now I've actually got the SharePoint 2010 site already set up and I've installed reporting services on it using the integrated mode. And I've already got a report running. And if I run that report, here it is, and you can see I've got a new icon here that looks like the RSS feed that you see on many other sites. If I click on this, I'm prompted to open a file. And if I do that, it brings up Excel straight away. And what is actually done is opened a small Atom SVC file which is nothing more than a connection string to that report. And that's associated with Power Pivot in Excel, so it's brought this dialog up straight away. I'm going to give it a friendly name. We'll just call it AW Report. And you can really see what's happening when I click the next button. It's interrogated the report that I've just run, and it's noticed that there are three separate data areas in it. Um, these are the three tablexes that I've got in my existing report, which you can see here. This one, this one, and this one. Anyway, I'm only going to take two of these and I'm going to quickly load them in. So it's found the report, located it on SharePoint, and sucked that data into this new tool which looks a bit like Excel. You can see I've got two tabs down the bottom here for the two things I've pulled in. And we've got the conventional auto filter kind of tools to sort and so on and so forth. We can add to this from other sources to build up a complete picture of our business. So now I might go and get some data from SQL Server and you'll see a familiar dialogue to do that as well. I just need to connect to my SQL Server database. Choose which database I want. I want this particular one, and you'll see why in a minute. And I can now choose the tables that I need. So we'll have customer, date, geography. We won't have any of the product ones because we've already got those. We won't have court. We'll have reseller, we'll have sales channel, sales territory, and finally we'll have fact all sales. And I'm just going to click finish. And bring all of that data in. And I'm going to leave the video running just to show you how quick that is, because the important thing is when we get to fact all sales. The reason I've chosen this database is that it's a variation on the familiar AdventureWorks database with one important difference. It's got over a million rows in this fact table, and that would normally blow out Excel, but not Power Pivot, which can handle in demos, I've seen over 400 million rows of data. I've only got 1.37 here, as I didn't want to leave this running too long. And you can see that it's now successfully fetched those rows. It's now preparing the data, and then we can start to have a look at it. So that was all pretty quick on two virtual machines, one of which, as I say, 
it's just got two gigs of RAM against it, so you don't need a lot of memory for this in-memory database. If I close that now, you can see we now have a tab for all of the things we pulled in, including the all sales fact table here with its 1.375 million rows in it. We have the same kind of functionality that we do in any normal spreadsheet. So I could, for example, just choose to select internet sales and very quickly I'll get back the answer. You can see there are just 687,000 of them here. So very easy to use, familiar interface, that's just what we want for our users. One other interesting curiosity when I go and get data from databases is in my option when I select other sources. One of the options here is the new SQL Azure. And if I click next there, I get a form to fill in. But in order for me to do that, what I need to do now is go over to my Azure site um, and pick up one of my databases here. And you can see that I've got my credentials, the name of the server and so on and so forth here. And this one is the one I want to bring in. So what I need is the connection string off of that. And I only need a piece of it, which is this bit here, which I'm just going to copy. And then I can go over to my Power Pivot dialog here, type that server name in, type in the name, my credentials, and I'm known as DeepFat, if you follow me on Twitter, put in my password. And immediately I can now interrogate my Azure site and realize that I've got one database in here called Blue Demo. And if I click Next now and elect to bring up the tables that are in there, in fact, I've only got only one, which is the product table, which is why I didn't load it in earlier. And if I click Finish, I can load data in from there as well. We'll just let that run for a few seconds. This will depend on your internet connection. And I've got my 400 products loaded in. So we can combine data from a variety of sources in Power Pivot. But of course, having combined them, we now need to be able to work with them. And that will be in my next screencast.